All right, of course, in that clip, we also saw Ron Scott, the Detroit activist and former host of this show who we lost, uh, in, I think, in 2016. It was just last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, so great, great memory there. Yeah. All right, I'm here with my special panel of guests, Kim Trent, Keith Owens, and Greg Bowens. Let's turn now to the topic of the closing, uh, the proposed closing of 24 Detroit public schools. Uh, this is an argument we've been having a long time in this right. city and this state about what to do about low-performing schools. Uh, Kim, I want to start with you because I know you're a parent in the city of Detroit who has to navigate this uh, crazy educational mm -hmm. landscape. Does this make any sense as a way to make things better for people like you? I, I honestly don't think so. Now, my son, we, we're we blessed in that we live in the neighborhood um, where my son with attends best, a DPS uh, school with one of the best yeah, right. DPS elementary. We were happy to see it on the list as one of the few, <laughs> unfortunately, and one of the few DPS elementary schools that is over 50 percent. High performing. Right, yeah. high performing. But that's not the reality for most parents. And I don't think closing schools, particularly when we have a new direction, we have a new empowered school board, we have financial um, stability for the first time in many, many years. Why would now be the time that you pull the rug out from under these parents and students, and particularly in neighborhoods where they don't have other options? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no one is having a conversation about smart growth among these charters because all these charters are coming in that are horrible. Some of them are good. So, most of them are not, yeah. and there's no quality control for them, but, you know, for us... But now we're going to close the public school. But we're going to close... I mean, it's just... It yeah. doesn't... I mean, one of the things we don't ever talk about when we talk about school closings is the fact that public schools are institutions in neighborhoods, exactly. and those neighborhoods rely right. Right. on those institutions. And a lot of times when you close the school, you doom the neighborhood to... Exactly. Uh, and, and a lot of these schools are in places where... We've started investing money. Uh, Osborne's a great example mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lot of turnaround effort. Mm -hmm. You close the school, what, what, what happened? Here's an interview, I think, I think it was in the free press, where they interviewed one of the parents who had moved to a particular neighborhood specifically. Right. You know, and then when they close the school, it's like, now, and because, you know, how are we going to get my kid to the school? Because, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, also the issue of transportation, you know, it's just not like it's just automatically there. I mean, how do you get them to the yeah. schools? But I think this is something we're also going to be seeing more and more because this plays right into uh, Betsy DeVos's, you know, hand. I mean, anything that it closes, that's, that's, you love you it. Because like that's it will open up. Oh, yeah. It'll boon open, to the charters. Yeah, boon to the charters. I mean, because she thinks charters solve everything. So this is a serious problem. Well, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, I think, uh, within the last year about neoliberalism and its impact on the black community and, and politics. Sure. And uh, the, th this situation seems to me to be a perfect example of how neoliberalism has failed us in that we're look we keep looking for market approaches to solve some of our most pressing I think that's problems. Because those schools are failing in part because of the unfair competition from charter schools, I want to be able to say. Yeah, but and the, the number one architect of that is Bart Betsy DeVos, who I don't think she would embrace the liberal <laughs> charter at all. She's the person who put all the money into No, 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 yeah. no, no neoliberalism, speaking from the perspective as an approach of using market forces to solve right, yeah. our problems. Solve yeah, public yeah, education. Public, yeah, yeah, right, certainly. And, and you, as, feel like and that's, a, you feel like right. we've done that in the city of Detroit. Right, I feel like we've done that in the city of Detroit. I think we've done that around the state, mm -hmm. and it has completely failed us. And so we never spend enough time actually putting the resources and doing the things that we need to do to support the teacher in the classroom and the mission to educate the students. So, but if we go back before the creation of charter schools yeah. in Michigan, which is in the mid to late 90s, mm -hmm. uh, the school district was in big trouble then when you and I mm -hmm. were writing about schools. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the early 90s, we had all these problems. So, you know, I mean, is some of this dri driven by our inability or unwillingness, I guess, to confront those problems even before we relied on this market approach, which I agree has mm -hmm. not, it's not delivered uh, any of the things right. that it promised us. Well, I, 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 w I, w I would submit to you this, Stephen, and that <clears throat> is simply is that as a society, we have been sort of schizophrenic in what we have demanded from our public school system sure. and from our educational system. And so it used to be just educate them enough to be able to work the farms and count and weigh grain and livestock. And then we moved into the industrial age and it was, uh, educate them enough to be able to operate a machine yeah. mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And then we got sort of lost <laughs> when we started going into the information age. Do we train them for computers? Do we train them for, mm -hmm. and we just didn't know what to ask for. And I think our expectations that we put on the school systems, you know, failed us. And we ended up with a bunch of nothing. Mm -hmm. I think there's also you know? the question of engagement, not to put everything on parents, but I think that I, I still remember the image of when Governor uh, Engler at the time, you know, did with the takeover, which, you know, I was opposed to, I think it's a good idea, but I still remember when they, when, you know, dragging people out of the meeting mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, where were you 
before, five years ago. you know, yeah, before, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden everybody's at the meeting. So, but when it comes to elections, there's something, you know, there are very few people are, voting, are paying attention until that happens. It's like, has to be a higher level of attention paid and engagement. For I mean, that. We, there's no question. We have to admit that as Detroiters, and I say that in, in some pretty broad, broad terms, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we've not taken care of our own schools. We have not mm -hmm. taken care of the franchise of public education right. Uh, right. for a really long time in this city. And I, you know, I, I'm hopeful that this new board. Uh, because I think we got some good people elected to it. We I do. think we have a superintendent in place now who's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't keep her, if they get yeah. someone better, mm -hmm. we have an opportunity. But but some of what we're looking at is sort of in a mirror, isn't it? The, well, is it a mirror in East Point? Is it a mirror in Easter? Is it a mirror well, in a great you know, point Royal too. Oak? Is it a mirror? I mean, there are plenty of over. places. Right. It's all over where folks are struggling and trying to thread the needle. And Bridge Magazine had written about how, like, you know, <coughs> charter schools had become the new way to segregate, right. you know, school mm -hmm. systems. And mm -hmm. I, I just think that we need to have, uh, I don't think it's fair to say that, you know, that we failed our children in Detroit in particular when we, we have didn't do all it been victims. Right, right of, I think, this market approach to right. public education. And when you talk about market approach, a lot of times the buzzwords the folks on the other side say is um, choice. Mm -hmm. Right. And really what you're giving, you're giving choice to people who have options. If you live in a neighborhood that has all lousy mm -hmm. schools and you just shut down one of the schools that's lousy, mm -hmm. right. and the only other option is other, <laughs> it's you're not really giving them choice, choice. Right. because right. we don't have, a, as Keith alluded to, we don't have a transportation system here that's right. reliable right. Right. that you we would put our children on to right. get to a school yes, and right, and exactly. we don't have the kind of resources to invest in that kind of thing so yeah. well, you know now you're they're, really now they're switching to, to the electronic who, stuff you know take classes online it's like yeah. you can't even get them to pay attention in class you really think you're going to be able to get these and kids which of course <laughs> destroys the whole idea of the school as a community right? yeah. exactly right. i'm sitting at home and you're sitting at home right right, right. right. That, right. Uh, right. that makes right. it worse we really not don't better. go to the right. same we're not having the same experience right and it gets back to the beginning like i say i mean i'm you know closing the schools that you know, closing schools don't make better schools right you know I mean right. how that that that's not it you know I think it's the wrong you know approach. the one voice that we haven't heard in this debate so far is the mayor of the city of Detroit I have sort of been waiting for him to come out and say well wait a second you know these are neighborhoods that he's uh, you know directing resources toward trying yeah. to get people to invest in some of them are right around these schools that right. they want to close and he hasn't said you know, I think there's a good idea. Well, just what I know about Mike Duggan, he's probably working behind the scenes. <laughs> right. on well, I mean, I'm sure that, he That's is. what I would imagine. <laughs> I, that's what I hope. I mean, because <laughs> certainly, you know, there's going to have to be some serious so contemplation about to how to go forward yeah. with this. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah, with yeah, the absolutely. neighbors. Well, particularly because what they're trying to do, um, I understand from um, you know, Maurice Cox, too. I mean, everybody, there's been much focus about you know, every downtown, but what he said just recently, I mean, that now the big push in terms of doing, redoing you know, neighborhoods mm -hmm. and stabilizing neighborhoods going on, and that's, that's supposed to be getting rolled out this year. You've got to have, 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 have the school. Yeah, that, right. that's, that's yeah. part of it. Some that. sort of uh, institution there. Well, even I, in my work with you know, my day job, mm -hmm. we have done, a, a, we helped a number of charter schools and, and a public school. You know, get started, and almost all of them were in Midtown and downtown. Yeah. I mean, is that right? which is not where the people are. I right. mean, the right. people, exactly. even though there is a lot of retail development going on yeah. there and restaurants and stuff, the people still don't live downtown in Midtown like right. they do right. in the neighborhoods. Right. So, um, we, you know, we really have to be strategic. Well, maybe Mike, Doug, maybe Mayor Duggan will be able to move the ball forward because I think that he has been a master at, at eliminating the issue of race in conversations. Sure, about by eight. going around it, just not right. uh, making mm -hmm. it part of right. Uh, what, I, I, what I think so. That's true. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, let's hope we, that works. Obama was the magic Negro. That was it. <laughs> like, pull things up. Uh, can't and, believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, that's my man, but I'm just saying. Right. In 1950, there would have been no question about whether or not Obama was black. He'd have right. been going to the back of the bus. Right. right. So, <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah. right. Kim Trad, Keith Owens, Greg Bowens, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.